Hi, Gene here with today's thought. I saw a story this morning, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, that's what triggered today's thought. So we're talking about hot off the presses here. There's a company, I don't remember, it went by so fast, I don't remember the, remember the name of the company, but uh, their employees, either they get, what they're doing is they're instituting another one of these diversity, equity, inclusion uh, courses, DEI, uh, the initials that it's known by. And I, I don't know, I don't remember remember if it's a requirement, honestly, whether it's a requirement for being hired at all, or they get some kind of, or to keep their jobs, or to, or they get some kind of reward for taking the, the course, higher pay or something. All I know is that this company is instituting the, this uh, course and obvious, the obvious question is why can't they, these companies just stick to creating a, a good product and, and selling it at a good price. They uh, have these other missions and you would have thought they would have learned from, uh, well, Dylan Mulvaney, Bud Light, remember that? Um, put a, tra a transvestite, you know, a, a, a man cosplaying as a woman on, uh, on their beer cans and their sales went, you know, way, way down where they remain today, uh, Bud Light. And then, um, well, as everybody, uh, if you haven't checked lately, remember uh, Colin Kaepernick, the the quarterback, the football player who took a knee, and, uh, you know, before the football games, and uh, the fans didn't like that so much, but Nike liked that, the sneaker people, they liked that, and they hired him, and they paid him a million bucks, I, I think, to, um, to be a spokesman for them. Well, I just checked and their stock is down, as I'm writing this, 44% from its, from its peak. And then we'll add to that, just look at the Army. You would have thought people would learn from the Army. You would think, would hope that the government would learn from it. As you may have heard, the government, uh, the military is having recruiting problems. Uh, people don't want to join the um, the, the army so much anymore and it's they make all the kinds of ex, uh, you know excuses but you have these diversity equity inclusion and pro programs which tells uh, a white male um, recruit that your chances of, of advancing of getting promoted are going to be limited that you won't be promoted on merit if there's somebody who is, is not as good as you on merit, but is the right color, they'll get promoted over you. And you have, uh, um, well, you have to remember that the, the mainstay, the, the largest recruiting pool for the military is uh, Southern white males. Some of them coming from families that go back generation after generation of military service. And those are the people who aren't joining, who don't want to join. And then you have all these, um, you know, the uh, non-white males and you have females and they're not making up the difference, uh, obviously. So you're, you're promoting all this diversity, equity, inclusion uh, nonsense. And um, the idea, I suppose, was to get more, uh, you know, people of color to join, and they're not getting more people of color to join. What they're doing, what they're getting is uh, fewer uh, white males joining, and as I said, the minorities and women are not making up the difference. But uh, what I want to get to today, the thought, the general thought, is one of the, the tenets of this diversity, equity, inclusion at this company that was, uh, that was reported in the story is that is to teach white people that white people cannot experience racism, that only uh, uh, people of color experience racism. And, uh, well, number one, that is absolute nonsense. And last night, I've mentioned in the past, I live in Tennessee now, but I lived in New York for 40 years. And I remember one, waiting for a bus on the corner of uh, uh, just off, just uh, um, west of the corner of, of Bro on Broadway, just west of Fifth Avenue. And a guy waiting for a bus, a westbound bus, and a guy across the street, black guy across the street, 
just walking down, you know, stomping down the street and shouting at the top of his, his lungs, I hate white people, I hate white people, I hate white people, as if that's not, uh, uh, that's not racism. And then you get, uh, uh, you watch your TV commercials ever since, uh, you, you'd see uh, people of all races in TV commercials, let's say, for example, and then you... Uh, you had the you know George Floyd after the George Floyd uh, um, death killing. He was uh, he uh, suddenly uh, overwhelming numbers of, of uh, minorities, black people in, in TV commercials. And you know there was not when there were no one put out a message or would or could uh, without getting really condemned uh, put out a, a message or just an unwritten uh, understanding in the advertising industry to uh, we want more white people we want more white males in the um, in our advertising but you, obviously the message has gone out uh, not just on merit if the black if uh, you know a minority uh, black uh, talent is is better than um then that person, if that's the best, uh, you know, auditioner for a, a commercial, that person should get it. No problem with that. But obviously, the the message has gone out, uh, whether explicit or implicit, uh, to just about only hire minorities now for commercials. I mean, you see, I. Um, I don't see that. I see a lot of black people in commercials uh, after uh, much more than their, their percentage of the population. You don't see as many white males. And the point is, getting to race, racism, there, is that not racism when you say, regardless of, of what, I mean, if, what if, the, as I said, the message went out, hire only white people, that would obviously be racism. But if you say hire only uh, uh, black people and women, um, that's, if you have, uh, um, I can't remember the last time I so let's say we have a, a, a corporate, um, you, you know, a commercial or some product where you have a corporation. The boss is always a black uh, black woman. Uh, you don't see white people being bosses over, unless it's a woman sometimes, being bosses over, uh, over black people. That's obviously deliberate. There's one commercial that uh, uh, really bothers me is for Fiverr. And I use Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R dot com. They're a, f uh, a website for freelancers to get work for, uh, you know, graphics, and in my case, for music, for, for mixing uh, uh, music recordings. But the, um, so the commercial is you have a, a two, you have a, a white male, black woman, and they're looking through binoculars at, across the street through the window at another com company, you know, uh, an employee behind a desk and say, why is this company, our competition, beating us, doing so much better? And they say, well, they're, oh, that's a secret. They're using Fiverr. They're hiding people. But they have in, in one, um, so you have then the guy says, is they're looking at nothing to do with the product, nothing to do with the commercial. But the the white male says, because uh, there's uh, like a dog sitting on, on the desk and say, boy, that dog looks really real. When you can see that it, it, it obviously is. And you have another commercial, maybe you've seen it, where the, the white male is, is saying, this is the one that really gets me. He's saying, why are they working through these binoculars? Why are they looking through the dark? Why are they working in the dark? And the the black woman, you know, she goes, ah, size and, and takes off the the lens cap from the the um the binoculars and in other words this guy was looking through he didn't realize he had the, the the lens cap on the binoculars but imagine that the other way the other way around where the the white guy is, is the one who's the, the the smart guy and the black woman is the one who who says why are they uh working in the dark and that's you would you'd have a, a real uh, a, a male storm of, of protests and that company would really be in trouble. And not just that, by the way, while we're on the subject, if I can digress, because you see so many of these commercials, um, say, where it's a husband and a wife and, uh, um, and, and, and even worse, are children, and the, the, the woman is, uh, is the wise person and, and the husband is silly and he, he's a dummy and she chastises him for uh, doing something stupid. You've seen commercials like this, I know. I'm sure you have if you watch TV at all. And 
belittles him in front of the children. And what kind of message does that send? Uh, so that, I digress, but getting back, this is my main point that I want to get to because they, you have uh, a lot of black people, well, not black people in general, but I, I mean, I live in Tennessee, you know, lots of black people are really great. I lived in Harlem for 10 years, for God's sakes, but um, you have uh, um, certain, uh, I call it like uh, Jesse Jackson, the prime example, or, or um, Al Sharpton, who, uh, that uh, they, race, race hustlers is the term I would use, race hustlers, and you have, um, uh, they say, well, they say you can't understand when you say America is pretty much, there's, there are pockets of, of racism here and there and here and there, just like either there are pockets of anti-Semitism here and there. And unfortunately, I have to say more and more uh, of it in blue cities, like uh, such as um, New York or college campuses where uh, even in, uh, well, in Nevada, there was uh, um, um Israeli prof um, lecturer, you know, a guest lecturer who was chased off, you know, forced off the stage by pro -Hama Hamas protesters, and the um, the police, uh, the the campus security were right there, and they refused to do anything. They did not um, evict uh, or throw out the protesters who were disrupting, but they. Um, asked the, the professor, uh, the, the lecturer, I don't know if he was a professor or not, but they asked him to leave. And the security said, well, the, these protesters were just exercising free speech. And the lecturer said, well, what about my free speech? Uh, I'm here to speak. And free speech does not, free speech means talk, speaking in turn. The other guy, when not speaking over somebody or preventing somebody else from speaking, that is not free speech. But what the, this is where the hypocrisy comes in that I put in the title today's today's thought, where you have uh, um, uh, the, these these race hustlers say, "Well, you you, ha, you can't say that racism that everybody they'll say every white person is, is racist. Every you're off your if your skin color is not black, you are a racist. And if you don't think so, well, how can you know? You're not black. How can you know how we?" Feel? Feel. And that what I'm saying is they don't seem to believe in the reverse. Yeah, I, I say that I just told you the example of the guy walking down the street, commercials all that. I say, uh, well, white people feel get racism from black people, and um, I've seen countless examples of, of black racism against a, uh, Asians. I I saw. Um, I think I told the story before of. When I lived in New York, when I was living on East 95th Street, there was on um, sat on First Avenue, there was a Korean deli, and you know uh, they caught a woman, a black woman, shoplifting. Okay, she was shoplifting. She now it wasn't a. Uh, uh, a customer being harassed because of her race. She was shoplifting. They caught her in the act. And she, you know, instead of feeling guilty or, or running away, she just told, she looked right at the Korean, uh, one of the Korean workers and said, go back to your own country. Go back to your own country. So if that's not racism, I don't know what it is. If if, uh, if Jews, uh, Hasidic Jews being attacked in Crown Heights is not racism, then I don't know what is. And so I this is my this is what I say to black people who say that white people cannot um, experience racism. I say the same thing that you say, okay? You're black and you're saying, I can't understand because I'm not black. Well, you can't understand because you're not white, okay? Fair is fair. But you never hear that, and I wish I, wish I were famous enough to be on TV. I, I, I would ask this question right out. But nobody, nobody asks that. I, I don't understand why. But you can see the obvious hypocrisy there, there that... Uh, um, uh, 
that if you're black and you you can say anything you want about race, you can accuse everybody about racism and uh, of being a racist, and you have to be believed because you're black and you're the only one who can know can know what it's like to be a black person. Um, experiencing racism but if a white person says well I experience racism too and uh, um, Mr. Black person you can't understand because you're not white so how do you know and you should believe me as much as I believe you I should have the same credibility as you do I'm not gonna hold my breath uh, waiting for uh, uh, for race hustlers uh, for Al Sharpton for instance to to, to, to say this and that's my thought for today thanks for stopping by if you could subscribe that would really be great share this video with anyone you think would benefit from it but most of all come back and see me again I would love to see all of you again and until I do see all of you again bye